right, so now we move on from solutions. We're or not moving on from solutions. We're moving further into solutions. And we're going to talk about what happens when we dissolve a solid in a liquid, right? How does that set us up for chemical reaction? And to do, to really talk about that, we need to go back and look at what are the, um, what some of the definitions that we defined in the very first video of the, of the, of the year. So we're going to look at solutions in terms of entropy. So solutions in terms of entropy, we have, um, I think first we need to remind ourselves what the definition of entropy is that we're using, right? So entropy, as you recall, is defined as the potential energy of molecules in a system. I think potential energy of molecules is one of those phrases that sounds like it makes sense, but is really hard to grasp when we talk about it. Um, what we're talking about when I say potential energy is I mean how easily can those molecules move? How easily can they find other molecules to interact with? How easily can they undergo chemical reaction, right? So think of it as basically degrees of freedom for whatever molecule we're talking about, right? So if we compare, just for an example, if we compare the entropy of a solid to a liquid to a gas, right? Solids have, very, have much less entropy because they are, the molecules in a solid are very rigidly held and they don't have a lot of um, freedom to move and react with things, right? Or, or find other intermolecular forces that react with them, right? So liquids and gas have more entropy and then gases have a lot of uh, potential energy because they have a lot of kinetic energy. They can move around, they can vibrate, they can do all the things that uh, molecules wanna do. So I just wanted to really quick kind of step in and say, this is one way to think about it, is just think of it as the freedom to move and to find different kind of organizations, organizational whatever and do that kind of stuff. Okay, back to the writing. All right, so potential energy, of course, we're gonna tie this back to intermolecular forces because that's what we've been talking about. So intermolecular forces, are a way of increasing or decreasing entropy, right? And this is the same idea, solids, liquids, gases. Notice that as the intermolecular forces are increasing, the entropy is decreasing, right? In gases, we have very little intermolecular forces that are holding molecules together, but we have very high entropy. In solids, it's the other way around, right? So, when we make a solution, so when we dissolve a solid solute in a liquid solvent, right, what happens to our intermolecular forces? What happens to entropy, right? So remember, let's think about, let's just think in terms of the solute, right? So we have these solute-solute interactions. And when we make a solution, what takes over is these are kind of overwhelmed, are overwhelmed in favor of, whoops, thanks. in favor of um, the solvent-solute interactions. Right, so we're decreasing those intermolecular forces. And so if we're decreasing those solute-solute intermolecular forces, what's happening to those solute molecules is all of a sudden they have more freedom. They have more uh, confirmations that they can find. They can bend, they can twist, they can interact with solute molecules in a way that's different, for, or in solvent molecules in a way that's different from how they interacted with themselves, right? And so as we move from a solid to a solution, solid to solution creates more entropy. So 
We're creating more entropy every time we make a solution. We're creating more potential energy, which is great if we want to set up a chemical reaction, right? Because in order for a chemical reaction to take place, we need to use that potential energy in order for those molecules to find new ways to react. So they need that freedom to move around and do that. So solutions are a huge part of chemical reactions. And if you recall, chemical reactions is what the, the all of Gen Chem 2 is all about. And so we're going to need to think of things in terms of solutions, and we're going to do that from here on forward. And the way that we get into that is this idea of intermolecular forces, because that's what pulls apart this solute and allows us to create these solutions where chemical reactions can happen. Okay, next up is concentration units. So we're going to look at solutions and figure out how do we measure what a solution is and all that good stuff. See you there.